mount all my work um, with an adhesive or I go to my framer and mount it down. And for my class, I've been just doing this and it's been working pretty well. Um, when I get home, I will mount it so it's more, um, you know, flat surface and it's on a, a nice flat, you know, the corners aren't rolling up. And I can finish off the corners also. All right, so I'm going to get started with this composition, all right? I got a little new pastel and I wear them down until they're like nothing. Um, but it's like a, past, a new pastel stick, that's all it is, a drawing stick. So let's take, let do my horizon. It's all about, I'm teaching kids at school right now, um, they're drawing for value studies and it's all about pressure, right? It's all about the pressure of your tool. And there is a, um, this background here. I think these trees in the way, way background are kind of interesting. There's actually another hill back here. Some kind of marsh grass. I'm just putting in my drawing. And here it comes over. And I'm not going to come off, and so I'm going to redesign this, okay? I'm going to come off. There's all kinds of stuff. Darks to me are really important. It's going to be really foggy and hazy up here. So I just want to remind myself there's some trees in the front that I want to make a little darker. And then we go off into this distance. There's some little ones back here. They're kind of interesting. So right away you kind of like see a drawing, right? Composition. There's some trees. Over there. So in this certain... Um, oops. Let's see. It gets so small I drop it. Um, I already this stuff all the time. I get it or some more here. Um, so there's my. In fact, I'd like to have this more interesting. See, doing it on the side, you're not, I'm not seeing it correctly, right? So I like to give it a little bit more um, interest. But I see these colors in here, and I go right in. I'm gonna do a wash with water and pastel. So it's all pastel. This painting, all right. So I'm going to take my darkest pastel, which I just found a brand new one, which I'm so happy. This is an eggplant. It's very popular for um, us pastels that like to put in our nice darks. It's a nice, rich bank, muddy bank here. I paint a lot around the North River, down in Marshfield, in Situate, Cohasset, those areas. Some of these trees are going to be stronger than others. I get really confused. I'm looking up there, looking here. <laughs> it's very confusing. <laughs> but you know, I did this whole hybrid thing at school, looking at uh, two different screens. Um, it got very confusing. Uh, at Seltzer Charter or Noel. Um, thank goodness we're all back into classrooms and everything's kind of back to normal. Um, the kids aren't normal, but <laughs> they, missed, they missed a whole year of school, most of them, and they don't know how to be in school, I think. It's kind of a chore right now without a challenge. Um, so I'm thinking about what I like to see underneath all this, right? I see a lot of violets. I do see this ground. I don't know if you see it back there. It's oranges and olives. That's going to be the basis for underneath all this stuff. So I want to use my magentas. Nice magenta in here. Every night I come back from my class and when I'm going to clean my box out, I never do. And I could replenish here. But I love this little, um, like, it fits in the purse. It's so nice, this little thing. All right. Let's do, uh, let's get some real purples in here. You know, like any painter, you know, in the back, you push things back, things are violet, right? Warm in the front, cool in the back, even in a winter scene. 
I'm gonna get some golds and rust oranges in here. I need like a dark olive. This is really hard to see in here, you guys. <laughs> With this lighting, but we'll do. It's almost like my studio in my bedroom. I have a spare bedroom upstairs is, is my pastel studio. I do have a studio outside my house where I work on canvas. The lighting is much better. Self, self light, beautiful. And a uh, Rockland. Uh, so I'm trying to find that one. I have a magenta I like to put. Maybe I'll just use this, I guess. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wash on this. Here's more orange. I really don't need to do this, but I'll put the orange where that reads are. Maybe a little bit here. And up in the sky, too, I can push color up with my brush. Just need a little. It's almost like, um, you know, watercolor. If you have watercolors out there, it's, um, you don't need a lot of color. You can move it around. And I like doing this whole procedure, too, with the water. A lot of people use alcohol. Pastel, you might have heard that. I like using water because I can move it around, push it around, keep it fluid, right? Sometimes I have drips. I let them drip kind of thing. That's kind of pain I'm doing. I can pull this off at a certain point because it's still just water and pigment. I can pull it off and get almost back down to the white paper. If I was using alcohol, it kind of stains the paper automatically, especially if you're outside in the sun. Um, and water doesn't matter outside because it dries quickly anyways. It's like the alcohol does. But then what I do, I have brushes that I use all the time. And they're very uh, nice brushes at one time. And I just grabbed them and started using them, but I love using them. But one's a little bit stiffer. One's really, see the pastels in there? Um, one's softer, one's stiffer, and then I use this one for really large areas. Um, I mean, I could use this for this area. So I have my water in a cup. I always have some paper towel. And I put dark on, I put dark colors on front to the light. I want to wash the light to the dark, just to keep them clean. So we'll start with up here first. And I'm just putting color. It doesn't have to be any filled up. Just, it's just giving the paper some tone. That's all it's doing. Sometimes when I do this, I'm going, to, oh, I leave an opening like the white paper. Oh, there could be clouds up there. But it's definitely not a cloudy day. This is, this is muted everywhere. It's a wintry, cold, misty. Now let's put some magenta or violet in here. You don't have to be like and again I can I can thin it out if I don't want that all that in there I can take it right off at least a little bit of white areas because it is snow I was just talking to somebody um, well Wendy when I came in Bill Hosner is a Michigan artist who um, paints a lot of winter scenes Robin I was talking to I'm sorry um, and he doesn't use any underpainting. He lets the paper, just like a watercolorist, um, do all the highlights in the snow. Like he'll let the white be the, you know, the lightest light, the whitest white, the catch light or whatever in the snow. And then he'll put light, really light grays, violets, um, those kind of things to show the, like the depth of the snow. They're really beautiful. So I'm just lightly putting this stuff on there. You guys see why later on. Oh, you know what I need to do? The whole water area. And that should be kind of a dark. I keep my colors. I like to only use a few colors. I should keep them out in front of me. I don't like to do too many colors for an underpainting. I like to keep it kind of simple. I really can't find this magenta that I want in here. Let's just use this. Oh, I want some color in it. Let's just use this. I do want this kind of heavy. All right, let's get my bigger brush. Oops. Can you guys hear me all right, everybody? Out there. All right. So my bigger brush, I'm going to just make this land 
This is all I do. I want you know, teaching the elements of art, right? I want to give it. Oops. I want to give that ground mass a little texture right now. And then this is going to make that dark area. This is all I'm going to do for this underpainting. I'm going to put this aside. You guys can all this is something. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Something's going on here. Oh, can you see it? Let me see it a bit. That's what's so hard at school. We were mirroring our computers and trying to get, you know, it was so difficult. Such a fuss. Challenge to do that. All right, so on this paper, this is not um, pastel matte. Another paper I use is called U Art. And it's a, I mean, I should let you guys touch this before I got started. That's almost like the velour. It's like really smooth to the touch. This is more grit to it. Um, it comes in grits like four, five, six hundred, eight hundred. The higher the grit, um, you want maybe you want to do like a portrait on a higher grit. The lower grits are more for you know um, maybe a, a textured painting kind of thing. So I go right in between like the five and six hundreds. They started making this um, black. It's not like a, a deep, deep, dark black. It's almost like a charcoal color, which I really like. You can use an art painting on this, but you don't have to. And um, I'm going to do this quick. Put my tape. I put it in my bag. I'm going to tape this up so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, didn't I put it in my bag? Oh, right here, in front of me. See, this is what happens. I blame it on the mast. <laughs> I do. I'm always tripping over kids' bins. I'm tripping over their, you know, stuff on the floor. It's just it's horrible. All right, so this is, um, and again, I don't like this photograph. Like, there's, you know, there should be some more light source, you know, like, coming through. And I can do that because I, it's, the painting should be better than the, the photograph. Your painting should be better than the photograph. That's why I tell the, the students I'm teaching right now. You're not painting the photograph, right? It's your reference. So this paper, I'm going to draw now <coughs> with my, my darkest pastels, the eggplant, OK? So let's say I like that nice walkway back there. I may say it's right here. And these are the light, nice light trees over here. There's some yellows up there. But the trees are very dark over here. I'm just going to bring them up. Very dark area back here. Let's see if they get lighter. Oh, I'm sorry. Bye. -bye. All right, so I'm just putting some eggplant. I'm putting some tree lines up there. I'm giving myself some things to look at and work with. I'm trying to design a composition here. Uh, there is like a little. I've been doing a lot of dune paintings too, and I was like, oh crap, I said winter. Because <laughs> I'm really like doing the dunes right now. Um, so right now I want to establish that light source back there. And I'm going to put some yellow in here. Now again, I could wash all this if I wanted to. I don't have to. Alright, so put some yellows in there. Now I'm going to get my greens. I'm just giving myself some ideas. And what I like to do, which I can't really, this is hard up here right now, is when I start using certain colors, I just want to put them in front of me. I don't like to, to start dabbling around and grabbing 20 different pastels. 
Um, I am a painter, so I know how to mix colors. I know color theory. I mean, I was a painter with, you know, oils and acrylics before I was even thought about using pastels. So they made it kind of really easy on us to have the pastels right there, like, oh, that's the shade of whatever. In fact, greens were like the big thing when I first started painting. Um, and it's so green here, you know, certain types of year. It's like, oh, I don't have that green. I don't have that green. And I actually have a ton of cool greens I don't even touch anymore. I like the warmer greens. You can, whatever you're using, the right value is fine, right? So it doesn't matter about the, the certain color of green. Just make sure it's the right value of green. Um, so I like my warms. There is warmth back there. So I just start putting some greens in here in the front. There's some darker ones in the back. This is very dark over here. Oops. This box carries all my tiny little ones. That's why I like to. I will jump in here. You can use cool on warm. I do it all the time. Cool colors on warm colors. Especially in the like in the distance. I'll go back and get some of my magenta colors. And this, this is the dark side, the shaded side, which I want to keep going in here with this. Oops. You can even, I see like, um, I love this color here, this. Do I get in the way of the painting again? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so it's a challenge here, it's a difficult to... Right. So I do see this nice, um, these warm browns, which is probably under like the, the dead leaves and you know whatnot that you can see under there. Um, how'd you guys feel with the storm up here? In Dunno. I had tons of stuff. Huh? Was it fine? Oh really? I was out for four days, and um, I have all these trees around my house, and I almost took down um, at the end of, before school started. Um, I was going to take some trees down, and I just trimmed, and I have these three maples in the front of my house. It, it should come down, but they're totally going to change the landscape of my yard. You know how you, I mean, they're huge, these Norwegian maples. So I was like this, praying, praying, like, don't come down, don't come down. I'm in a big branch, because one did come through our roof one time. And um, the backyard has two of the large maples like that, and one just split in half. And it was almost like it jumped, because the yard next door has this huge oak, and I call it the mighty oak, oak and it's, it never falls apart, ever. And um, it like it jumped through their yard and hit my tree. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> uh, so I'm still, it's still out there, and I gotta, I've been cleaning up little by little. Uh, I'm trying to establish, I'm trying to see sideways here. I'm going to get some dark greens in here. So they are cooler in the, in the little bit of the back, those greens. And I think it will help me, you guys see this, I'm going to put this blue in here. It might be a little bright. Let's get a. He's a violet, I think. Guys, I can't see up here. <laughs> I really can't. <laughs> I don't think it matters, really. The right value, Christine, the right value. I want this one. This might be better. It's kind of on the violet -y side. And I'm going to put more light um, sun coming through than it shows in this photograph. I don't know if I want to go this dark. Maybe.
This paper takes a lot of uh, layering. Okay, I got to really come over here. So there is snow that comes off in here, these little areas. Just keep it in there. I'm going to go right in here. Maybe over here too. Put some more sun coming through. Maybe back here. If I have it there, it's got the snow in there. I have a little. Am I okay? You guys are okay. I like this darker one better. There. And even this, this is going to be the color of the snow that's in the woods here. It goes back in there. So, pastel societies, um, we do have a convention, I think. If I was here a few years ago. I don't remember how long ago it was. I mentioned that. Um, in fact, the 15th, I got, it's on my calendar. It's um, the convention, which has been on hold because of COVID. And it used to be on a, um, the odd year, every other year. Now it's going to be on an even year just because we had to cancel it or whatever. But um, getting there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. Um, talk about blind gesture drawings, right? Um, so it, it is, it's like a rock concert, right? So they put, they put these blurbs out on the Facebook page and on the IAPS page. The 15th, blah, 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 the you know, 18th, you start registering for classes, but the 15th is the registration for the whole thing. And it goes, like, the next day you'll be gone. You won't be able to get any rooms in the hotel. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Um, and plus, we haven't had it, and everybody's jumping in the bit just to, like, see everybody and, you know, go. It's a huge trade show. Um, we have a lot of fun. And this year, it's um, after school gets out, so I'm very excited. I'm going for the whole week. Usually, you'll go for like a long weekend. Um, a huge award ceremony. There's workshops. There's products to be bought. It's just fabulous. All right, I got to find that right. And this is why I'm hesitating over here because I like to layer, and I can't find my nice. I'm just going to go with the color. I like to have this nice, um, this magenta on top of my greens. Especially pushing them back. And I'll establish these trees a little bit more. Back here. Just to give this now, it's going to have some contrast, right? With that really light. I love working with snow. And um, I've kind of fallen in love with this dark paper, too. If you don't like something in, on this paper, too, you can take a dry brush. Like, I didn't use this brush yet. You know, not that I, I really want to get anything, but you can brush things away as hard as you want and get rid of something. Or take water and wash it off. Um, I'm, still get, I'm getting in everybody's way, I know I am. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fill in this area right now. And I want to establish my trees. There is a little bit of sky back here pushing through. I think it's going to help me up here. There's going to be lighter. You know when you have things poking through, they have to be lighter. 
And it's too great a blue. We have to be a lighter blue. So we don't like like bigger holes up there. So I will establish some sky at some point. We over here this so yeah. Put that to my greens. Find that dark green light step down. I like this to get out of everybody's way here. Any questions, you guys? Yes, I will. Nine by twelve? Yeah. No, I work. I work. Um, these are like my study size, and I'll work larger. Um, I mean, I was doing thirty by thirties and thirty by forties for a while. I, I'm a painter on canvas, and um, the one thing about pastels, you do have to put them under glass. So, in the framing, it's like that. So. I've kind of, I'm not like veering off of pastels, but um, I'm really trying to work more on my canvas, and I work larger on canvas. You don't have to frame a canvas, right? You can just paint around the edge or whatever. Uh, I'm having success with that. So I like working this size, 11 by 14, 12 by 16 are good sizes for me, depending on what gallery I'm putting, putting them in. I'm in Acton too, which I haven't submitted any stuff up there in a long time. They've got like six of my paintings. I've been sitting there for a couple of years um, due to COVID and everything else has happened. Um, I like to give them their lar the larger work because they'll sell them to homes that want to have bigger spaces to fill, you know, they're kind of consultants or whatever. Yeah. No, I paint on them, acrylic and oils. Yeah. But, you know, there are artists that have used pastels. I mean, the Impressions did on canvas. Yeah, yeah. And when I revisit um, those paintings, I'm like looking, right, and I'm like, ugh. I want to do that. You know, you still have to put glass on them unless you figure out a, a varnish or something. Charcoal, you can. I did a charcoal drawing on top of uh, acrylic, put charcoal on top, a little bit of varnish, and it stayed on. So I'm wondering if a little bit of application of pastel, I could do the same thing. Because I like that loose drawing on top of um, uh, painting. Let's, I'm trying to establish my trees here, and I'm going to do that, and then I'll go to my other. That might be the color right there. I'll go to my other um, painting, because it should be dry by now. Can you guys see this back there? Does it look like something? Yes? <laughs> it's like, yes, I can't tell. <laughs> so you can use like, these lights, I could um, brighten up a little bit better and get a brighter, brighter green in there. Yeah. Yep. I use my studies for either or. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, you just have to sometimes take a um, a jump or, or a leap or whatever. So I gave some pastels. Well, right, I was telling you earlier, I wanted to be in a, a Michigan gallery. So um, I was up there in Harbor Springs, Michigan, and it's a really nice boating community. Um, I thought I might as well walk in this gallery and, and um, see if she's taken any new artists or whatever. I usually don't do that. <laughs> but I thought, I'm going to do this. I'm going to walk in there and blah, blah. And she goes, oh, we're not taking any new artists. And I started walking around. And I said, oh, I know this person. And oh, I like their work. And then she just said, oh. She goes like, you know what? Give me your website. I'll take a look at it. Sure enough, by the time I back, came back to Massachusetts, she had emailed me. So I gave her some pastels. And... Um, but the thing with pastels, see, you're, you're working under glass, and this is a kind of a touristy area. People come in and out with their boats. Um, the whole thing under glass, even though these were small pieces, I sent four small pieces, and pretty, pretty much they were studies. 
um, they sat there. Plus through COVID. I gave them to her, then COVID hit, whatever. But they kind of sat there. And so she gave me a call in January, and I was like, oh, I know what this call is, right? Like, you know, come get your work. <laughs> it's not selling, right? And she goes, no, no, no. She goes, people, people look at it, they like it, but they're, they just bypass it. They're buying the oils and the acrylics. She goes, do you paint on campus? I go, yeah, I do. But they're really big. She goes, oh, that's even better. Like, how big? So I told her 30 by 40, 40 by 40, something like that, squares. And she goes, do some and bring them when you come in the summer, which I did. And two of the three sold. So now I, you know, it's like I was hesitant to do that. And because I geared myself to doing pastels, I love pastel. I love this. It's so immediate and quick. But the studies I can sell. And I, I just love going out and doing a quick study. That's almost my favorite part of doing it. Um, and then coming in, sometimes you, you, it's just memory. You make your notes, you take a photo, you got your study, and then you work larger. But usually these turn, I'm not saying this, but I'm not outside. Around. Usually the smaller ones when you're outside turn out better. Because your, your intuition's out there, you only have a couple hours to work from, you're grabbing your pastels, and I don't take a lot with me, I usually limit myself, and I'm glad I do that. So you're not like, hmm, in your studio, you know, whatever, kind of looking around. Um, no, so that's, you know, these definitely could work anywhere. Like, I could do a large canvas with this thing, you know, if I really wanted to. Yes? Oh, sure. So I'm going to walk back. So when we come back from break, I'm going to finish... Um, this other one I put a wa wash under, okay? Beacon Hill Art Walk, um, downtown Boston. And um, I started selling my work down there. I was like, hey, I can use these pastels. But getting that kind of brands I use, so that's, I love, I use dry pastel. I don't go oil pastels. But I do know oil pastelists that hone their skill, and they're just beautiful. But they stuck with it. You know, right away I said, no, that's not what I want to use. And I do have friends that are oil pastelists. And... Um, they do loan. Now the pastel convention I mentioned, no oil pastels can come. No. <laughs> Is this a dry pastel convention? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, it's funny. But I use, um, the brands I use and are my favorites are Terry Ludwig's and they're all different shapes. So the Terry Ludwig's I like because they're like square. They're all handmade. It, it, I don't know if you guys know, pastel is the purest pigment you can use to paint with. It's more archival than oil, more archival than acrylic. And you don't have to clean them, right? And you don't have to clean the painting because they're under glass. So those guys, the impressionists that use these to do their paintings, those paintings are as bright and vibrant as the day they painted them, if you've ever seen a show. Plus, I think they made their own papers, too, that they, they worked on. Um, so Terry Ludwig's are this. I'm glad I have a brand new one here. It's kind of like a... Uh, square. It's got nice square flat edges. It's got this nice edge on their corners and on the tip. I'm a person that uses the side of everything. The, the side of my pencils when you're shading. I'm trying to teach the kids right now at school. It's all about pressure. So when they, I'm do, teaching value, they want to use the tip of the pencil, right, to make it light to dark. No, you use the side of the tip. It's all about pressure. So you're going to get dark, dark side, the light side. So this to me, actually, the way Terry's are made, they're almost like they're a little bit more than an inch, not quite two. I think they're inch and something, inch and a half. It's almost like a brush to me, right? It's a good brush size, even larger than that. So I can just scrape across and make a nice brush mark like that, especially with my bigger paintings, right? So it's almost like a brush mark. So Terry Ludwoods are my favorite favorite, and they're very soft. Then I would go to, um, I'm glad I got a full one of these. I didn't know somebody's going to ask. These are Great Americans. This one's a brand new one. It was like just clean. To clean pastels, you can use cornmeal, like Roman cornmeal. I never knew that. Um, great Americans. So these like a definitely, and they're not flat either because these are handmade. So none of them are going to be perfect. So if I want to do this with a Great American, it probably is a little bit curved. You know what I mean? So you're going to get that hollow edge. I break my pastels. And that's another thing. When people get into pastels, you open a box and they're so pretty. Right? They're like, oh my gosh, look at these, a candy shop. But they're meant to be broken. They're meant to be broken and used. Right? So if you can't get that stroke you want, break your pastel. Right? Break it in half. Take the wrapper off. Right? Another thing, people um, save their wrappers because of numbers are on there. So you go look for that certain blue, that light blue you're using for C's or, you know, whatever. Um, I started doing that, and of course they get lost in my studio. <laughs> Um, so I got an array of colors, an array, and then what's another one I might use a lot? Um, Schminkies I use still. 
Um, I like those real nice soft pastels, but Terry Logwoods are my, my go-to. And when we go to the convention, it's all like wholesale, right? So you go and get like, there's, I'm telling you, you walk in and it's just pastels everywhere. And um, so they give you a box and you just load it up and go, okay, this is my box. No, you go back the second day. <laughs> you go, this is my box. <laughs> and I was like, you keep on filling up, filling up. All right, so let's get started with this guy. So I did my nice underpaintings. This is, looks like almost like it's um, black, right? But I don't want it to look like that. It's almost a greenish because of the photograph, whatever. I'm going to give this, you know, some interest and richness to this, um, the look of this painting. So I know I have a blue in here, a dark blue. I just like to test things out, right? So I think this will look really nice on this violet for this very cold water. So if, and I like when I teach um, my class, classes or whatever, I like to teach color harmony, right? So if I put this color somewhere in the water, I got to have it somewhere else. And I'm going to put it aside so I know. But maybe it's back here in these trees. I got to use it somewhere else, right? Um, the sky. Let's initiate the sky here with some very light light. I want to get a nice, this might be a little bit dark. Right on top of that, a little bit of violet. I like this. Let's keep on going. You know, I like this for the sky. Now, if I put this on this color on the white paper, it looks a little bit different. You know what I mean? So it's all about the underpainting, putting that extra tone and color. Oops. I just made a mess there. I can always brush that off. I'm going to keep this color because I'm going to pull it down a little bit too somewhere else. Put it there. Where else might I see it? I don't know. Keep it in my hand. Now I told you I like, I like to initiate warms and cools on top of each other, especially in distance. Especially in the distance. Because you just don't want to put all cool colors back there. There's going to be a variety of like olive colors. Really light. And this is really hard to teach um, students, right? Light, light touches. It's almost like, you know, if you're a painter, an oil painter, an acrylic painter, more so uh, oils, um, all about the edges, right? Keeping those soft edges, the broken line. Uh, trying to find something. I need my eyes checked, I think. <laughs> really having a difficult time. All right, let's start putting this, um, these warm colors up here, your ground. There'll be a lot of snow on top of this ground, but let's initiate some other colors here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take my white. You know there's different whites, right? Cool whites, warm whites. I'm more of a warm. I like my things warm. Warm white. There's like this back here. We'll get through those in a minute. I want some of this ground showing through. You're not going to lift that again. 
Nope. Nope. This is dry on the wet. This is dry on the wet. This paper has a lot of um, open areas now that I can just like leave. I'm trying to find. There's a darker one. These nice cedar trees. Am I getting in the way again? Just tell me to get out of the way. No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I started, I used to use alcohol. And um, it dries too quickly and it stains. You know what I mean? Um, I have a ton of um, old paintings. I started going through them. Because I don't want to waste the paper. This paper is kind of expensive. Um, so I was going through old piles of stuff. And I was like, oh, I wash, you can wash it off, but then um, you had this ghost. Because I used to use like, oil, um, a, a, my alcohol on really, and using really dark underpaintings. And you can't get rid of it. So you flip the paper around, or you crop the paper, you know, to reuse the paper. Because you can wash this off and use it again. And if you guys knew that, all right? Especially if I have this mounted. Like I usually dry mount, or I use this adhesive you get. It's called uh, graphic. TAC graphics or something like that, you get a, I get a dick blick. I get a big sheet or I can get like a 9 by 12, um, 3 in a pad or whatever. You can rinse these off and use their paper again. That's how durable it is. Um, so if you really have a, um, a drawing that you really, really put under and it's dark, you're going to have a ghost. But you can work with it, you know. Uh, pastel mat, I'm using pastel mat. Pastel mat. Pastel mat. It's a product from France. Um, somebody just, you know, we're always telling each other, try this, try that. Oh, I tried this paper. And somebody gave me a sheet, and I used it one day, and I was like, oh, I like this stuff. You know, so I just started using it. This comes, um, the bad thing about this paper, um, so it doesn't come, like let's say I wanted to make a 30 by 30 painting or whatever. So it's 27 and a half by 39 and a half. It doesn't come 28 by, right? <laughs> like, it's like, so, yeah. So, you know, your custom framing is the, is the pain in the butt, right? So you try to keep standard. Well, you can't because that, that half an inch, they're always doing that to you. Um, now, I don't know who told them. So they're 9 by 12. Um, pads of paper. I know why they did it, because when you frame something, that little rabbit, you know, you have like eighth of an inch on either side. And it does make a big deal. If you're, if you've got composition going, let's say I went too close to the edge over here. Now your frame's going to cover that, right? It's like, no, I want a little, I want snow over here. I wanted that to show, right? Um, so now they're making their nine by 12 pads, nine and a half by 12 and a half. <laughs> so you got to keep it in your head. Don't go all the way, don't think you got all that room, because you're going to have to put it in a frame, right? They're always messing with you. Um, I won't lie to you guys, I'm getting a little tired. <laughs> but we are doing it. We're doing this. Um, tomorrow's my easy day. It's like Wednesdays and Fridays are my easy days at school. Unless they're looking for coverage, and then you go and hide <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> because I'm telling you, it's like we don't, nobody has enough subs right now. Nobody has anything. It's like crazy. I know, I know, and I'm, I'm fortunate to have, you know, I like my job, I love my kids, I, I really do. Yep. You're talking oil pastel on top of um, painting? No, because I have a friend that does uh, puts a grease pencil on top of his paintings. Yeah. yeah, and he doesn't put glass on top. But the grease. I think you have to put like a varnish on it. Oh, you just so you do it your painting. Varnish. Yep, you, he, he sprays his too. Yeah, he sprays his. I brush on my my paintings, but if you have like something like that, you don't want it to smear. You have to spray it on. Oh. Yeah, 
That's what he does. Because he asked me, because I, I sent those paintings to Michigan. And um, so I told him, like, yeah, I, I was varnishing him. Because I don't always think about doing that. And I didn't. He goes, like, well, you spray? He goes, because I have pencil drawing on my stuff. And um, he goes, did you spray this? And I was like, no, I brush it. He goes, it didn't, you know, didn't smear? I go, no. So. Um, Um, it's Liquitex. It's like a clear varnish, matte varnish. That's what it is. I get it. It's, it comes out cloudy looking, but it goes on clear. It dries clear. I mean, you have to work really quickly. And if you're working like mine were 30 by 30, you have to work really quickly. You know what I mean? Because it dries. And plus I was doing it like when it got really warm in May and June, before it started getting rainy. It was really warm. I'm a fourth floor studio in my place. And I'm trying, I'm sweating up there. It's like quick. And your crook is hard anyways to work quickly. You know, I do a, I put a retardant in it and, um, to make it slow, slow drying. But still, you lay a brush down with that stuff. It was drying. It was going. <laughs> it's like, so it, <laughs> the spray probably would have been a better option. Um, so I'm going to, back here, I'm telling you, i got to find this perfect violet, grayish violet, to give this nice, hazy look back here. I love this. Um, Look back here, but it's got to be the right value. And what I do, sometimes I put the, it's a little dark, but I'm going to use it. Um, sometimes I put it on, and I'll go back with the warm. I'll go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This, this is like lighter in here. This might be perfect for this. Remember, if you go somewhere, you got to go somewhere else with it. And even this color. Like I got it back there. It can be my trees. It can be up here. In the foreground somehow. Just a touch of it. This in my hand. Let's tone this guy down a little bit. Did we miss the foliage this year? Did anything really happen? <laughs> right? With the leaves? Did anybody get their full fill of the leaves? I didn't. I want to make these trees a little bit darker. So they stand out. I was like, can you see the little guys back here? Kind of. Now, if I use this, this kind of like a brown, I'm going to put it up here in my bank. I don't want, I don't want to cut in too, too dark. When you get up here too, I know, you know, from the distance that you're trying to create the illusion. But I like about my paintings is when you come up, you see all the different colors and layering that's been used. Now I can make a little bit more pressure on some like heavier snow areas just to create that. This bank here to kind of hide it. How are we doing with time? I don't even know what time it is. <laughs> Are we good? Okay. But I tell you what, I got almost two old paintings done in one time. It should be really bright back here. Just so much better than the photo. Yeah. The painting is always better than the photo. That's why I say, right? I can test it. Oh, no, 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 no. And don't ever, you know, preconceive. Like I, I was fretting, you know, like. Um, I used to do that when I had to do a demo. 
like, oh, which one am I going to do? And I went up home looking at the right photos and like making sure, I, you know, maybe even doing like a little dee 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 before I get in here. Because like, because this is hard. This is hard, right? To work on the side. And I just want to make it look perfect. And I go, you know what? No, no preconceptions, right? It's a process. Have fun. Um, I can always look at it when I get home and go, ah, you know, and <laughs> wash it off. Um, let me put a little bit more in the sky here, but I think this is it. I like um, very simple. I've been keeping my paintings really simple. And, um, and this blue can go anywhere I want it to go. This little bit of blue it might be in here somewhere. Harmony, good composition, drawing, and harmony. And um, so I'm going to say, like, I've taken a few workshops. I wish I could take more. So when I, I am going to retire soon, hopefully, um, I am going to take some more workshops. Because I like, I, gave, I took one of uh, Dawn Emerson, if you want to look her up. She's almost a mixed media. Um, beautiful pastel work, but she does a lot of printmaking and then does, you're talking about layering, like do another media on top, like drawing or whatever. So I took this whole workshop with her down the Cape and it just opened my eyes up to, like, you just don't have to do this, right? And that's why I do this. I don't work on my canvas, but I have so many more ideas um, that she gave me to do into my own work kind of thing. But I, the pastel pa uh, workshops I did take was Albert Handel's, it was the first one. Uh, drawing, 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 observation, drawing, excellent drawer, and harmony. Those are two things I got at his workshop. Um, Rich McKinley, which is Mr. Pastel, he's the president of IFs right now. He's all about experimentation. So he used, and we had a discussion about this too, because he would use turpentine, watercolor, acrylics, all this stuff underneath his painting, and very little pastel on top. So when we compete in a competition, it's got to be 80% pastel, dry pastel, right? So mine's all pastel, even though I wet it. It's all pastel. So they're arguing if somebody does that, does a lot of art painting with like an acrylic or an oil painting and do pastel on top, is it 50-50 or is it 80% pastel? Now there was a whole discussion about this, so it's got to be 80%. Like who's measuring this stuff, but um, that kind of thing. So Dawn, no, so Dawn Emerson can't, can't put a lot of her stuff in because she does a lot of printmaking and, and other stuff on top of it, even though it's, they're just gorgeous pieces. Um, and the next one was Liz Haywood, who lives by me. So I took her workshop and some classes, you know, we all kind of got together and learned more about pastel. She was all about being confident. Put that stroke down and leave it, right? And that's where you get, you know, that's what's, that's what's made me as a pastel painter, right? Taking a little bit from each, each um, workshop, so. That's it. <laughs> so you got, the, you got two little paintings and, you know, I mean, we're working on a little bit more, but um, two little, little winter paintings. Yeah. Well, I should have brought a little sample of both. So you take the pa same pastel, I don't care what it is, and put it on both papers. It's a totally different color. It's a totally different color. You know, you're, you're taking maybe a nice um, blue like this, it's going to almost be white on your black paper. You know, I mean, it's going to be really, really light, you know. Um, totally different. If, you're, if you are outside, um, do you ever use the black paper outside? I haven't yet. I haven't yet. But I might. <laughs> I might. <laughs> yeah, so you can buy, um, Pastel Met does come in different colors. They have like a, a gray dark gray, which I don't use. Um, they do have the colors. But there's also co uh, Art Spectrum, Color Fix. Those all come in an array of, of toned paper. And when I first started, we all did everything. You know, oh, it comes in eggplant, or it comes in uh, terracotta, or it comes in corn yellow. We were buying those things and just trying them out. Um, so sometimes I do a water, uh, underpainting like I just did, dark areas and light areas or whatever, or I just cover the whole thing with orange or yellow, if it's a really sunny, like a lot of dune paintings I do, I just cover it with yellow and oranges and then work from there. Because they're already, I like the white paper because white is light. And I always like leave a little bit of the white showing and do that with the canvases too. I leave a little bit of the white showing out of the paper if I can. Um, just to give that kind of shimmery aliveness to it, I guess, you know. Um, but I do love this medium. I do love it. 
just the expense of framing it. <laughs> right. No, charcoal paper you can't. Like, can't sign? No. But the ones that have a grit to them, yes. But there are, um, and I can't remember because I haven't used them in a long time, there are ones that you don't use alcohol on it because it'll pull up that surface. And water, too, if it's wet and you go back brushing on it, it'll pull the surface. So you are in pastel are pretty much the, the papers I use. Cans on touch, cans on touch, they make a surface, a sanded. I love that, too. You can use water on that, and I use it for, like, my figure drawings. Um, it comes a lot of grays, like light grays. Um, they're perfect for figure drawing, or they come in like a, a buff color. So it was pastel matte. Yep. You art. You art. Yep. You art. The pumice. The, yeah. Yeah. So you can mix your own ground. So I'll trick. If you don't want to invest in paper. You can take a foam board, like I would get one that's going to stay flat for you. So get um, gator board, but that's really expensive and it's hard. But if you use an archival type foam board, and don't work too big, right? You got to do both sides. You know, either either just do um, some kind of acrylic. You got to wet both sides or it'll curl after a while, I think. So you add pumice. You can do your own grit, like experiment. You want a tough grit. You want a fine grit, and you add it to your acrylic. Yeah, I have friends and they just make their surface an expensive way of painting. Pastels on, yep. yep. Some people make a pastel ground that are that already. Yes, yep. Yep. Yeah, I still, I still have a thing. So I want to do this. I still have a bag of it. <laughs> I did it a few times. But it's nice to show students. You get a clear gesso, and you mix the ground with it, and you spread it right on there. Yep. And you can actually add a color to it. A little acrylic to it, not too much, right? And get a color that you want for the background. Yep. It's a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. Um, it's a fun medium. It's a dirty medium, I've got to say that. So you got to keep your hands clean and stuff. Um, but a anything, you're using oils or acrylics too. And when I got back into oils with my brushes, I love, that's why I want to get back on my canvas because I love using brushes. That's why I use a lot of brushes when I'm working larger with my pastels. I can't put them down. I think, well, I'm not done with my brush yet, right? Um, I was like, oh, with this. You guys, this is my brain these days, the scrambled eggs. Um, I don't forget what I was going with it about my canvas work. But anyways. Um, do you make a point of limiting your your brush size to the palette? Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah, I do. You should see my room where my pastels are. All of us, all of us have too many, yeah. way too many. Because you, you might win a merchandise award. I mean, you, I have too many. I really do. And that's why when I go teach a beginner, I'll take my pastels with me. In fact, like, uh, Terry Ludwig found out if you're an instructor, he'll send you like a sample box, like leftovers or whatever, which is really nice. Um, but I have stuff that I just put in a box and I let my students use them because I, I really have too many. So this is pretty, I mean, why do I have all these when I can go outside and use this? Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when, I, when I come back in, though, I have the ones that, I mean, I have nice new Terry's that I'm going to use for my finished paintings, yep, yep. Any other questions? Any other questions? Anything in the chat that we need to address? Um, I've been relaying the questions from the audience. Okay. Here, but, um, I think that's, oh, here's a comment. Gorgeous work, love the advice, no preconception, it's a process, have fun, and thank you so much. Is what the oh. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>